All right, thank you so much. Today is Monday, March 21st, 2022. At this time, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Mayor Walter, here. Vice Mayor Cortez. Here. Council Member Anderson. Here. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. Council Member Hughes. Here. Council Member Neal. Here. And Council Member Mendoza. Here. At this time, we'll start with a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. At this time, we will open up our first call to the public. I do have a call to the public form from Mr. Michael Sherm, who oversees the Florence CERT Recognition Program. And thank you, everybody, for being here this evening. Uh, my name is Michael Sherm, and I am currently the program director for Florence CERT. Uh, I'd like to thank the time of the mayor and the vice mayor and the council uh, for affording us this opportunity. Uh, we're here to recognize uh, Florence CERT members that have graduated in the past two years uh, without being recognized in front of this council due to a small little event called a pandemic. Uh, here with me today, we have representatives from, from class 2021-1 and 2022-1. These individuals behind me represent Florence, the Florence CERT team, which consists of 56 members. We will hopefully test another class in the summertime as our interest list has already grown over uh, 20 members. Uh, recently, the Florence CERT members have helped out with the Florence Music Festival, the historical home tour, and the car show. Even today, they were instrumental in teaching hands-only CPR, AED, and choking to uh, the residents of Florence Gardens. Uh, and we had over 35 people show up to that training. Uh, in the coming weeks, we are planning on helping out with the Road to Country Thunder, and then obviously Country Thunder itself is one of the bigger events that the CERT team does, where they are able to uh, facilitate transport for all of the um, disabled individuals that wish or park within the, the disabled parking lot and need a ride up to the stage area. So uh, we are already full on our schedule for that, uh, all the individuals have already signed up for all the shifts. We have reached out to Maricopa CERT as well. We are a, a partner with them and they have members that are also gonna help us. Uh, so with that, we'd just like to say thank you for your support. Uh, as the team still grows, we hopefully will continue to assist the town in any way that we can. Thank you very much, and thank you again for your service and for being here. It's such an essential program for our community. Is there any other call to the publics at this time? IT, can you check online to see if there's anybody with their hand raised? Thank you. All right, at this time we're closing the first call to the public, but we will have a second call to the public. Item number 6A, introduction of Supervisor Jeffrey McClure. Mr. McClure, how are you this evening? I'm doing, <clears throat> I'm doing well, thank you very much. I want to say thank you for taking the opportunity and the time to come and be here at our council meeting this evening. Um, the new Pinal Supervisor Districts were approved through the Board of Supervisors on March 2nd, 2022, 
And this became effective for election and voter registration purposes on March 3rd, 2022. And it will become effective for all other purposes, including operational, budgetary, and administrative purposes on June 30th, 2022 at 12.01 a.m. You're making my job way too easy here. Well, no, because I'm going to give you the amazing opportunity right now to introduce yourself to all of us now. Okay, so you know my name, Jeff McClure. Uh, I'm happy to be your supervisor in this district. It's a, I mean, it's an honor to do what I do. Um, you know, the interaction between the county and the cities or vice versa is really integral to our uh, development in the county and what we do and to the citizens. And it's, um, I'm a man of very few words, but, it's, but, it, but it, is, it is great that we can work together. And I look forward to working with you in the future if you ever need me. I am moving my office to the 1891 courthouse, um, so I'll be locked away in some little vault in there someplace but but i'm always available for anyone that needs me here in the county you know, in the city uh certainly in the rural areas and um, i look forward to working with you in the future well and there's a lot of um unique areas in our community that also overlap where you know you have the county and then the town of florence as well as the town of florence is in your county so you're a great resource i'm glad you're going to be right over at the historic courthouse and I've enjoyed, you know, being able to meet you and talk with you and look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anybody ever wants to go to lunch, let me know. You know, I'm happy to do those kind of things. All right. So thank you very much. We have some amazing eateries here in Florence, so. I, I've tried quite a few of them, yes, thank you. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. Item number B is the presentation of the Outstanding Employee Recognition Program Award to Tanya Hockett for her outstanding contributions to our organization. I wanna take a moment and just share with you Tanya's nomination. Tanya is the Recreation Coordinator at the Dorothy Nolan Senior Center. I honestly do not know how you could work for the town and not know who she is. Not only is she a huge advocate for the senior community, but she's also there for all fellow town employees. She will cook for any and all events. She will fill in when and wherever needed. Tanya is always thinking of others and their needs. Her job never stops. The most amazing part of it is that she does it all with a pure heart. I have seen her on her way out the door at the end of a long day. A senior came in with a new phone and needed help. Tanya put her things down and with a smile on her face and with patience in her heart, she took the time to help. She handles issues that may arise with kindness and compassion, but still gets the job done so that everyone involved is happy. Tanya leads her team extremely well keeping everyone on task and getting the job done, all the while, while we are enjoying ourselves. She is sincere in her kindness, caring, and the love for her job. Tanya is the hardest worker I know. She is there, willing to help the seniors 24 seven. She may never know how many people love and admire her for this. Another employee has nominated Tanya with the following. So this is two nominations. This is the first that we've read. Two nominations. Tanya is helpful to our seniors through her hard work, always assisting them when asked. She does her very best to provide what is needed. Tanya is a super hard worker, job well done. Note, Tanya has worked with this employee to help him grow his abilities and skills. Through this work, Tanya has also been blessed. I'm going to invite Allie to say a few words, and I also want to invite Tanya up. So I will see you down there. Go ahead. I would 
I'd just like to echo everything that was said about Tanya. Um, she does everything with a, a great heart. She's a great cook. We're lucky to have her on our staff, and we have some of the best potluck meals um, with her presence. And, yes, yeah, she's always willing to go above and beyond to help anybody in need, and we are definitely very lucky to have her on our team. Tanya. Tanya, I want to give you the microphone, young lady. <laughs> okay. <Sorry>. Hi. <laughs> well, I want to thank town council and the mayor and everybody for having this program because I think the whole town has a lot of outstanding employees that deserve recognition. I'm staring at one now <laughs> that her and her mom I just want to thank Allie and Laura because Laura is my mentor. She got me to where I'm at and I love my job and if it wasn't for all the volunteers and the seniors and all the other town employees that help me whenever I call up and say help, which is often, I just thank you all. So, <laughs> so we have a presentation that we want to give you. You also will be receiving a $75 gift card to any business of your choice in the town of Florence. So you can let Miss Garcia know and we will make sure you have that. Right, you. Let's give her one more round of applause. Madam Mayor, I'd just like to say if, uh, if you haven't had biscuits and gravy at the Senior Citizen, you need to go down there. Right? <laughs> Was like the voice from up. <laughs> Our new sound system is amazing in here. Item number C is Jade Archoa, poll co director of survey research, presentation of the Town of Florence 2021 community survey results. Miss Lisa Garcia. We are excited to have Poco here with us to give out our survey results and um, they're going to ask, help us answer any questions that you might have along the way. So with that, they're already on the screen and they're ready to go via Zoom. Good evening, Mayor and Members Council. Thank you so much for having us uh, this evening. My name is Jada Rocha, and I am the Director of Survey Research for Polco National Research Center. And I'm pleased to be here this evening to present the results of the 2021 National Community Survey for Florence. And before I dive in, I do want to, on behalf of myself and my Polco co-workers, I'd like to thank Lisa Garcia. She was our primary contact for us during the survey development and implement implementation process. She was a pleasure to work with, and she provided thoughtful feedback throughout the project. And I would also like to acknowledge my colleague, Alyssa Brunner, who was the project manager for Florence's survey this year. And she actually did the, uh, the work for the survey project. Just a little bit about us before we dive into re the results. So National Research Center has been a premier provider of survey um, services for over 25 years for um, municipalities all across the U.S. We 
um, have long-standing partnerships with ICMA and NLC, and our founders literally wrote the book on citizen surveying. In 2019, NRC merged with Polco, which is a civic online engagement platform. So in addition to our um, standardized community surveys for which NRC is known, we are now also able to offer um, a greater degree of resident engagement and outreach using our digital platform as well. And I do want to emphasize for you share the results with you, but there are a variety of ways that these results are typically used by our clients. Um, so most commonly, our clients use their survey data to monitor trends over time in resident opinion. So as you conduct more surveys going into the future, and you'll be able to identify trend lines um, and ups and downs, changes over time in your results. Also to measure aspects of government performance and public trust. Most commonly, survey results are used as part of um, the budgeting process and also for strategic planning decision making, and in some cases even to help create a strategic plan for municipalities that do not already have one. And finally, to benchmark their um, community ratings against those from other jurisdictions across the country that also, con that also conduct the survey. So the National Community Sur Survey, or the NCS, this is our uh, most popular community survey. It is a standardized five-page survey, comprehensive survey. It covers um, what we call 10 facets of community livability. And these 10 facets have been identified by survey researchers as being most vital to the quality of life for residents in the communities in which they live. So um, these 10 facets also dovetail nicely into different departments often for our clients and for department heads to be able to easily access the data that is specific to them. So the overall flow and structure of the report is based around these 10 facets of livability. And I do want to cover the methodology that we use to conduct this survey. Um, so survey was conducted from late November to early January of uh, 2021 and 2022. And we employed what we call a hybrid mailing approach. Um, so to explain this in a little bit more detail, there were a total of 2,700 households randomly selected from within the town of Florence um, selected to receive the survey. 1,200 of those 2,700 received a three-part, what we call traditional mailing. This included a postcard that included a web link and instructions to go online to take the survey, followed by a survey packet one week later that included a paper version of the survey, a postage paid return envelope, as well as a cover letter, instructions, and another web link. And then finally, one week after that, those households received a second survey packet um, asking them to participate if they had not already done so. The remaining 1,500 selected households received two postcard invitations to complete the survey online. These were mailed one week apart. Uh, and the um, purpose of this hybrid approach to mailing is um, it allows us to contact a far greater number of households households in the community for similar cost um, if, if we were going to mail the paper copy of the survey to all households. Um, so it allows us a much greater uh, rate of contact with residents. It's also more um, environmentally sustainable of an approach in that we are not printing and mailing a five-page uh, survey packet and then also involving uh, printing and postage, data entry. Um, so that helps um, be more of a green approach as well as keep costs low. And then finally, this hybrid mailing approach will allow us to assess the response rates between the two mailing approaches to inform in future years if this needs to be modified in order to maximize the response rate. And so it allows us to compare um, how many folks that receive the paper surveys versus how many that receive the online invitation um, and allows us to make recommendations going forward for how that might change. Um, so with all that in mind, um, out of those total of 2,700 households that were selected, we received a total of 513 responses for an overall response rate of 20%. Uh, this is 
on the high end of response rates using this hybrid methodology. Uh, typical average response rates nationwide for this approach are about 15 to 20 percent. So great news there. Um, and with 513 responses, that yields a margin of error of plus or minus 4 percent. Our goal as survey researchers survey researchers is 5% or less, so 4% is even better. Um, the results of this survey were statistically weighted to census data for the town of Florence, and this is an important part of scientific survey research. It ensures that your results are representative of your community as a whole. Um, and, and then finally, in addition to this random sample survey effort, uh, we conducted a what we call a non-probability open participation online only survey. This survey was kept separate, the data was kept separate from the random sample responses and the entire community was invited to participate online. Um, we received 154 responses to that survey effort. Those responses and those ratings are also included in the main report. They are just included separately and those results were weighted as well. Any questions about the methodology before I go on to the results? I'm also happy to take all questions at the end as well. Okay. And then finally, um, I do want to mention our national benchmark database because this is a major reason why so many of our clients choose to work with us. So we have more than 500 com comparison communities in our full database. And this is especially valuable to first-time clients who have conducted this survey in that it gives you context for each of your ratings to understand whether any given rating on, um, for any item on the survey is higher or uh, similar to or lower than the national average. Okay, getting into the survey results themselves. So our survey includes two questions um, that ask about those 10 facets of community livability um, broadly. So the first of those questions asks about these items on a quality scale. You can see those ratings here. The far right column indicates um, comparison to the national benchmarks. We also ask the exact same questions, but in a, on an important scale. How important are each of these? So one question is quality, the other is importance. And I show these to you to um, indicate how we create this quality and importance matrix. Um, so we use this chart, this is also included in the report, we use this chart to inform, among other things, uh, the key findings that we've written up and included in the report. So um, this bottom right quadrant with the green star in it, these are items that were rated relatively lower in quality and higher in importance by residents. And so we often consider these to be potential areas of focus for the community. And then giving an overview compared to those national benchmarks. Um, out of all of the items on the survey for which we can provide benchmark comparisons, 78 were similar to the national averages, five were rated higher, and then 38 were rated lower than average. And I will get into those in more detail as I go along. Getting into the survey highlights, I do want to point out that these highlights were what stood out to us as survey researchers, but there is a lot of data in the full report. So there are other highlights to be gleaned from this as well. So with that, our first key finding, Florence residents enjoy a high quality of life and a strong sense of safety. So at least eight in 10 residents positively rated Florence as a place to live and as a place to retire. And the rating for place to retire was higher than the rating given in other communities across the, race, the nation, so higher than average. Also, about eight in 10 residents would recommend living in Florence to someone who asked and plan to remain in the town for the next five years. Both of those ratings were similar to national averages. Looking at safety ratings in Florence, um, overall feelings of safety along with related safety services contribute to the high quality of life residents experience. Virtually all survey participants indicated that they felt safe in Florence's downtown and commercial area during the day and in their neighborhood during the day. And also about 9 and 10 felt safe from violent crime, from fire, flood, or other natural disasters, and also from property crime. All of these safety ratings were similar to the national averages. 
looking at safety-related services in Florence. So all safety-related services received um, high marks from a strong majority of respondents. Uh, about 9 in 10 gave positive, positive meaning excellent or good ratings to fire services and ambulance and EMS services. About 8 in 10 gave positive marks to crime prevention and police services. Crime prevention was rated higher than the national average. Uh, and then about roughly three quarters uh, gave positive ratings to fire prevention and education and animal control. Um, the Other than crime prevention, all of these were similar to the national benchmarks. finding number two, residents appreciate various aspects of local leadership. But looking at overall ratings for governance and for local government performance in Florence, um, all of these were rated similar to national averages. So um, about eight in 10 gave positive reviews to the overall customer service given by Florence employees. Um, about three quarters gave excellent or good ratings to treating residents with respect. Um, and then about six and ten, between half and six and ten gave positive ratings to most of these remaining items that you see here on the screen. Again, these are um, on par with those ratings given in other communities across the nation. And additionally, another item on the survey, overall quality of services provided by the town, that received positive ratings from about seven in ten residents. In addition to the standard questions on the survey, we also provide the opportunity for um, clients to ask custom questions on the survey. There's some space available on, for that. So um, one of these custom questions asked residents to rate the quality of services provided by specific segments of town leadership. So in this question, about um, eight in 10 gave excellent or good ratings to quality of services provided by town staff, about two thirds positive ratings to town council, and then about six and 10 to the town manager's office. Also in another custom question unique to Florence, nearly all respondents indicated, 95% um, indicated that they would strongly or somewhat support the enactment of a town code that would require the town manager and department manager to live within the town planning area. finding number three, Florence's economy may be an area of opportunity. And again, this is identified in that quality and importance matrix that I showed previously. So about four in 10 residents positively rated the overall economic health of the town as a whole, um, suggesting this facet of community livability um, might be an important area for focus or improvement. And then looking at specific um, aspects of the economy in Florence. So about half of residents positively rated Florence as a place to visit and the cost of living in the community, and these were similar to the national benchmark comparisons, but uh, Florence as a place to work, the overall quality of business and service establishments, about four in 10 residents positively rated each of those, and those were lower than the benchmarks. And then other aspects of the economy, employment opportunities, a vibrant downtown commercial area, variety of business and service establishments, as well as shopping opportunities. Um, three in 10 residents or less gave those positive ratings, and those were also lower than the national averages. Our fourth key finding, residents value Florence's parks and support further improvements to the town's recreation facilities. So about um, three quarters of residents positively rated town parks, while about roughly six and 10 positively rated recreation centers or facilities and recreation programs or classes. All of these were similar to the national averages. And then in a, a couple more custom questions that were um, included on the survey that specifically related to parks and recreation. So this is the first of those. When asked about specific parks, existing and proposed, parks in Florence, most residents prioritize improving facilities and amenities at Main Street Park, Heritage Park, and Little Lead Park. About nine in 10 or more um, prioritized each of those. And then slightly fewer um, said the same for Poston Butte Preserve, followed by Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds, and then about um, only about half 
or in favor of a new skate park. And this is the combined percentage of res residents who rated each of these as a high or a medium priority. Another more specific follow-up question about the Charles Whitlow Rodeo Ground, survey participants were asked to rate their level of support for two different options for renovations to this venue. So about three quarters indicated that they would support repairing the existing facility and installing a new well in that same location. A slightly smaller proportion, about two thirds, voiced support for relocating the grounds closer to town and connecting to existing water systems. Okay, that is a recap of the key findings that I just covered. I do just very quickly want to mention that as part of the um, services that you have already paid for, you have ongoing access to the Polco online digital engagement platform with your residents, no extra cost for to continue to do follow-up um, question sets on that platform. If there's any topics you'd like to dig deeper into, this is a great opportunity to do so. And uh, Florence, as of earlier this afternoon, had um, 353 panel participants already signed up. So those are folks that have already um, signed up to receive communications if you were to post any further survey content on the platform. And I'm happy to take questions. Thank you for that presentation. I'm going to open it up at this time to council. Council, do you have any questions? Council Member Mendoza, Council Member Rodriguez. Okay, all right. I did not see any questions at all. I did have one question in regards to the 513 total responses received, um, with a 20% overall response rate. How does that compare to other communities our size? That's a great question. I'll need to follow up on that. We don't typically break down response rates. By, um, by population size. In general, I, I, w I do want to say, um, just as a very broad anecdotal comment, that the smaller the community, the higher the response rate we tend to see. Um, so that tracks with the 20% response rate with that hybrid methodology being on the high end of what we typically see for that approach. Thank you for that clarification. Mayor and members of council, I do want to thank both Jade and Alyssa for assisting with this um, incredible new research that we have to help us in our future strategic plan, as well as each time we're going back in and considering how we spend our taxpayer dollars, we can also look back to the citizens. And as, as they, Jade mentioned, we have this incredible tool to where if council wants to deeper dive into any one of these subjects, we can put more information out. And so we have incredible opportunities before us. And this is our baseline. And when we do it in, again in two years and we focused on the needs of the citizens, I expect to see that grow. Councilmember Rodriguez? Something I would like to point out is in the future when we do these presentations, if we can also get a demographics breakdown um, regarding the uh, population that did respond, if we do have any data collected regarding, um, you know, maybe some statistics, I think that helps us better decipher um, who is responding also so we can also understand sort of our target. Publicly, I'd like to have that out. Absolutely. We'll keep that in mind for future presentations. I do want to briefly mention your um, results are available online as an interactive dashboard in Tableau Public. Um, and those do have bre uh, breakdowns of demographics that you can um, dig into. That is a link that is shareable um, that anyone can access. And Ms. Garcia, I'm glad that you mentioned about being able to dive deeper as we are continuing with our strategic planning. Um, one of the areas of, it caught my attention, and we're always looking at this, 94% um, wanted the focus with economic health, 95% with utility infrastructure. I'd be interested to know based on the demographic, which utilities are we talking about? Because as you know, 
we have different utilities within our town that the town services as a whole as well as utilities that are broken up between uh, private partnership as well as the town of Florence yes yes and and I do want to let everyone know that after tonight's meeting the, these results will be posted on the town's website and we'll have a special link to where everyone can see them so and and we'll have the um, PowerPoint also uploaded and I want to give special recognition I noticed the positive overall feeling of a safety the overall quality of natural environment and residents connection and engagement with their community so that's something that I feel that you know we've all worked very hard towards achieving and it showed through in the surveys thank you so much Jade for being here this evening and for your presentation thank you all very much item number seven is our consent agenda all items on the consent agenda will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda unless a council member or member of the public objects at the time the agenda item is called. Item A is to rescind resolution number 1815-22 setting the amount for the permanent base adjustment election. Item B is to approve a contract with Tischler Base to provide the 2022 infrastructure improvement plan and daily impact fee study in an amount not to exceed $87,380. Item C is acceptance of funds and authorize the interim town manager to sign the grant agreement with the Arizona Department of Homeland Security in the amount of $224,437 for overtime wages, benefits, and vehicle mileage. Item D is to receive and file the following board and commission minutes, February 17th, 2022 planning and zoning commission meeting minutes ladies and gentlemen that is our consent agenda if anybody would like any item removed at this time have to have 7d 7d thank you with that we need a motion approving the consent agenda removing item 7d so move second all in favor aye, aye. aye. all opposed Motion carries. Councilmember Anderson. I just wanted to uh, point out that the uh, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission minutes, if you haven't read them, you should read those. Those people are doing a lot of good work for us. And uh, we have a lot of commissions that are doing good work for us. And so I, I just don't want to, you know, sweep it under the carpet. We need to make sure that people understand that we, we appreciate all that they're doing. And if you go look at, uh, their minutes you can see that they're all involved and they're working very hard at this so thank you planning and zoning thank you for pointing that out with that we need a motion second motion and a second all in favor aye, aye. aye. all opposed same sign and that motion carries Item 8 is new business. 8A is discussion approval disapproval of authorizing staff to post a notice of the intention to increase property taxes on the town website. Ms. Becky Jimenez. Mayor, this is the item we've asked to be removed from the agenda. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Item B is discussion approval disapproval of a resolution number 1819-22. A resolution of the town of Florence Arizona proposing a permanent adjustment to the 1979-80 base expenditure limitation of the town of Florence and directing the town manager town finance director town clerk town legal services director or their duly authorized officers and agents to take all steps necessary to carry out the purposes and intent of this resolution Miss Becky Jimenez thank you mayor and vice mayor and town council on March 7th, uh, the staff brought before council a resolution in, to increase the expenditure limitation base to $5 million. The format of the Auditor General's office requires that you set the base by from one point to another. So we need to set that from two, and that amount would be um, an increase from the base of $1,165,610 to 
to buy $3,834,390. The total base would then equal $5 million. Uh, the Auditor General's office is very particular about the way that you state this. So this is cause for having to actually restate this. In uh, previous action tonight, we rescinded the resolution adopted on May 7th. In 2018, the Town of Florence voters approved a permanent base adjustment in the amount of $451,500 via Proposition 422. That amount was too conservative and did not take into consideration that the population may be reduced temporarily due to prisoner re, re allocations and did not um, have a sufficient factor for growth in it and uh, as you know the economic of the development of the town is taking off right now so we need to provide a um, increase to the base limit in order to be able to expend funds necessary to run the town of Florence the permanent base adjustment option seeks voter authority to adjust the base that uh, prior year 1979 to 1980 base spending. At that time, the limitation was $711,040. So uh, that was a very low amount uh, in comparison to what the town now needs to support all of its enterprise funds, all of its capital needs, and the general funds operation and maintenance plus its special revenue funds, which include um, development impact fees, it includes SLIDs and other um, capital outlay items. The permanent base adjustment factor does not have anything to do with raising or lowering taxes. It is a basis to allow the town to expend funds and uh, necessary to uh, sustain the operations and maintenance and currently it's at a too low of a level. So we're coming before council now to go ahead and accept this resolution and state it uh, specifically as the Auditor General needs it. There are certain uh, things that we have to do after this. We have to uh, submit a detailed and summary analysis and a projection to the Auditor General's office along with the resolution to be reviewed and, and approved or sent back for corrections. So that's where we are now in this agenda item. Council, do you have any questions? Yes. I think I ask this each time, Becky, just exactly what is the $5 million limitation on? Is that general funds or? No, it's the total town. Um, it's the total town's budget. You have certain exclusions, uh, amounts that can be excluded from that base, but what we're doing with this $5 million is setting it so you don't, so we will not have to come back to council for many, many years. It allows for a lot of growth, and it includes every single fund that the town has. Oh, okay. Thank you. Except for the CFDs. Those are separate. Yeah, thank you. Council Member Mendoza. This, the five million is not the amount we're spending every time. But that's a um, what am I thinking? That's what the cap, right? We're not going to be using that every time. We're just trying to. You're you're operating basically your budget last year was six almost sixty five million dollars. We had exclusions of about thirty one million dollars. So you are ex expending those kinds, or we budget those kinds of funds. For expenditure so as you can see the town is growing and with that comes the need for expenditure uh, the previous year I believe I had a 45 million dollar budget I'm looking at about a probably about a 55 million budget this year and if we don't have the expenditure authority what we have to do is either cut back on what we're doing cut department expenditures cut capital outlay or we have to go out and borrow money to be excludable in order just to operate so this will really uh, help the town to provide the ability to spend the monies they actually have in their funds 
Okay, thank you. An example that we always give is that we just recently needed to replace a fire vehicle. Had we not been approaching the expenditure limitation, our finance director would much rather spend our money than incur costs associated with, um, oh, with interest rates. And based on the fact that we needed to be excludable, we had to go out and we had to borrow the money through a bonding process, and we will be paying tax on that and interest, and that's, that's one of the things we have to do. With no further questions or comments, we need a motion. I make a motion. We approve resolution number 1819-22, a resolution of the Town of Florence, Arizona, proposing a permanent adjustment to the 1979-80 base expenditure limitation of the Town of Florence and directing the town manager, town Florence director, town clerk, town legal service director, or their duly authorized officer and agent to take all steps necessary to carry out the purposes and intent of this resolution. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Town Council. We appreciate it. Thank you. Item C is discussion, approval, disapproval of awarding the Rodeo Grandstand Bleacher Bid to Bleachers International to purchase eight 10 row 22 inch long bleachers at cost, not to exceed $190,000. Ms. Allison Felice. Thank, thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, yes, staff are recommending purchasing eight 10 row 22 foot long bleacher systems to allow for seating for approximately 976 people at the rodeo grounds. Uh, this will be a safer option than what, what is currently there. Uh, the bleachers that are there currently have been there for quite some time. Um, the bleacher systems will not be set into the ground and can be moved if council decides to relocate the rodeo grounds. Um, if the bleachers do need to be ro relocated, it will cost the, the town a few thousand dollars to um, hire a company to load the bleachers on a trailer and haul them to the new location. And that, that's all I have, if anybody has any questions. Council, do you have questions? All right, since there are no questions, we need a motion. Make a motion to approve item 8C as read. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Thank you. Item number D, discussion approval disapproval of adopting a new comparator list for the purpose of conducting salary analysis against cities and towns in Arizona that more accurately reflect the town of Florence in services and internal structure. Ms. Catherine Wilson. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this agenda item is pretty straightforward. Um, in 20, not, uh, 2009, the town uh, hired a consulting company to do a compensation and salary analysis, or compensation and uh, classification analysis. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, and in that uh, study, they um, devised this uh, list of comparators that we've been using since then, and it's 15 uh, cities and towns across Arizona, some of which do not offer the same services that we offer. Um, several of them don't have fire services, which makes it really hard to compare our wages um, in an accurate manner. So in February, um, interim town manager Ms. Garcia asked us to all as a team uh, suggest cities and towns that we felt would more accurately um, represent our services and um, the list that follows is 10 uh, cities and towns six of which uh, or actually five cities and towns are still on the list from the previous list um, we also still included Pinal County um, most of those are actually direct comparator or direct competition to our labor force. Coolidge is one, Pinal County is one, um, 
Queen Creek is another. We've lost employees to these organizations, and so we felt we needed to keep them um, on our comparator list. Um, and with that, uh, that's basically where we're at, and we're asking that you approve our new list so that I can uh, conduct an internal uh, analysis of our salaries and our classifications. So there's a difference on our microphones, whether we hit the button or there's this main menu where I hit the button. So this was green, but that was red, and that needed to be green. So I apologize. <laughs> Council, I, Council Member Hughes, did you have a question? When you're putting Queen Creek in, it's a two-county facility for fire and, and police. Are you taking the Pinnell side of what they contribute or how is that put together for salaries? I'm a little confused as to what you're asking. Well, you're, you're using Queen Creek as one of your uh, viable mm -hmm. towns to um, recreate. It's a dual county city. Mayor, members of council, I'm happy to help with that. Okay. So when a municipality goes in and pays a base rate for an employee salary, mm -hmm. they do not take in comparison to where their money comes from. Okay. They look at the total compensation of the employee, and we do look at the total revenues. So we did a side-by-side -side comparison when we looked at these, not only to um, what the population was, we looked at also what their budgets were when they come in and at the end of the year, where Becky just at $65 million. We also compared ourselves at that level to be able to see communities that were um, similar to us in the size, um, the number of employees they have, the, the, the um, revenues they have coming in, and then we also looked at services. Who provides the exact services? When we go back, we want to see cemetery, we want to see water, we want to see wastewater, we want to see fire. Um, the other services are very common. Um, when we were looking at them in the past, like um, Catherine said, we had fire department only had five comparables. It makes it very difficult for us to do a survey. We have to then go back in and attach them to another um, position to be able to carry them through. This gives us the ability to look at all positions and to look at not only the positions we currently have, but we will have to start ben benchmarking positions that we will need as we grow. And we'll have to say, when we come to this, this certain level, we're gonna need three additional officers, or we're gonna need two additional firefighters, or we're gonna need a water assurance officer at some point. And we're gonna have to start tying it to our growth so that we don't lose track of our needs. First thing, and, and, and as council tells me constantly, is that you wanted to see our employees taken care of. And this is not only the way we take care of our employees today, but it's, a, it's for the future, so we take care of the, the future employees that the Florence will need. Thank you. The other, th the other part that I thought was very important is that before in 2009, Queen Creek was in the county for police. They had their own police department now, and that salary has gone up, even public safety alone. So it's good to see that you're, you're putting public safety in a place where we can retain some of our employees. Thank you. I have a question. Proceed. Uh, what about EBCOR? Did we, did we get any data from them, or do, how do we try to compare to private industries that we're competing with? Municipalities typically don't compare to private industries. Um, we can go out and do a rate study and look at that to just make sure that we're in line, but typically our rules are completely different and the way that we process our rates are different. And so, um, but we can go back in and we can ask, ask EBSCOR if we can have a copy of their employee salaries so we can just benchmark it against it as a review but then again it would be one one portion of our scale and so it's complicated well yeah, I know it but we've lost some employees to them and I, I thought that would be a good comparison yes well let us go back and find out what we can find out from them and we'll keep it as a side note on the side to make sure that what we're doing thank you you're welcome can I interject something else as well just to give council member Anderson a different perspective so coming from like, I'm gonna use a school background for example. So you have your public schools and you have your charter schools. Your public schools, one of the benefits if you will, 
long road, you have that ARS retirement. Whereas if you work for a charter, typically you don't have that retirement. You'll find that a lot in regards to public safety. For example, you have Town of Florence Fire Service, but then you also have Rural Metro Fire Service. If you were to benchmark our fire service against Rural Metro, you'd find that discrepancy because once again, you have that public versus private and you know there's certain pros and cons with each, but ultimately it's up to the individual that takes that position with the organization to make that decision for themselves. Oh, I understand it. I just know that, that we are in competition with them though for certified wastewater workers and things like that. So just make sure that, that we're not out of line. You know, we do have different benefits than, than they have, state retirement, stuff like that. And, but uh, just want to make sure that we're not completely out of line with them. We have and, lost some employees. And, and we're going to be happy to look at that. OK, thank you. Any other questions or comments? OK. With that, we need a motion. I make a motion. We approve item 8D as read. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And that motion carries. Item E is discussion approval, disapproval of issuance of a request for proposal for concierge services at the Charles Whitlow Rodeo Grounds. Ms. Lisa Garcia. Mayor, members of council, we went back and we um, talked to BLM and we received both the concessionaire um, sample as well as planning samples when you have a partner to be able to plan with. We have combined those documents into both a contract and an RFP. We went back and we have reviewed prior minutes of the council that um, began in October or October, March 22, 2021, all the way to current to try to find out exactly what council is looking for and what the needs are of our community. I've outlined in your um, request for council action the items that are included in the RFP as well as the additional service deliverables that have been requested along with the timeline that is included in the RFP. Town of Florence is currently looking for someone to partner with us to be an expert in those areas that staff may not be, to be able to come back to plan and to be ready to take a, um, another look at what we want to do with our rodeo grounds in both activities and in items. Um, the BLM patent is for equestrian uses, but there's so many more uses that could take place at the site. We're we'll also come back to the two main questions that are still outstanding on the site, and that is where should the site be located and uh, the water usage. And we really feel, staff feels, that we need council to make a determination on the site location so that we can bring back solid uh, information as to the water situation. Um, we have relooked at it and we have some creative ideas, but before we can move forward that, we need to make sure that we are be doing our due diligence at the right site. Also want to say that since we are moving forward and have started planning for um, Territory Square, we also feel that the downtown area in the Territory Square portion of the town of Florence would not be the proper site for a rodeo ground. I can go over each one of the examples that are the, the um, requirements that are for the RFP if you would like, or I can simply ask, answer questions. If you just want to hit the bullet points, okay. that would be. What we're doing is we're asking somebody to come in and operate, manage the facilities, including but not limited to promoting ac advertising and planning and operating successful rodeo events for the facility, including the annual junior parada and other reoccurring special events appropriated with the facilities. We're asking that a they create and implement a short-term and long-term master plan for the facility and um, a promotional plan for sponsorships, fundraising, community outreach, including um, related timeframes for each. We're asking for them to create an annual and a long-term operational and maintenance and capital improvement budgets. 
We're asking that they serve as site manager at the facility, including maintaining the physical presence on site for all activities. We're asking that they perform regular maintenance and repairs. We're asking for them to collect fees for associated events that are held on site. We're asking for them to um, obtain sponsorships, fundings, and other finance programmings for maintenance and capital improvements. We're also, we're also within the documents stating that they will work through the Parks and Recreation Director to get capital improvement plans within the town's budget so that the town can participate, but it's up to council to set those priorities. We're asking that they collaborate with the council in, in, in planning, programming, and budgeting related to the facilities, and we're asking that they formulate supported and meaningful recommendations regarding long-term viability of the facilities and the improvements. We're also asking that they review and identify potential funding for financing mechanisms associated with the renovations if they want to completely overhaul and are recommending that rather than to go one step at a time and pay as you go. We're asking that they attend a kickoff meeting with staff. We're asking that the project manager identify the tools and methods to be used in the project for moving forward within the budget to satisfy the plans, process, and priorities. We're asking that they provide out community outreach for the community at large, engaging in critical components of planning the process and involving the community in many levels of the at large promoting of the events grounds. We're asking that an advisory committee be held that is one member of council, the director, and committee members of the um, concessionaire's choice. This is to make sure that council has copies of those minutes only on a quarterly basis to make sure that council continuously knows what's going on and again to make sure that any budget needs get back in to the annual budget. And that sums up basically what, what we're asking along with a huge contract that is required and has been reviewed by BLM. Um, basically, we're asking for somebody to come on site with a vision for what the ground can be utilized for and to help the town promote um, that site. We're not saying that it has to only be used for rodeos. We're saying that it has to be consistent with equestrian uses so that the rodeo grounds is not harmed in any way for equestrian uses. And it has to, of course, be con consistent with the PAP and PPA patent. Council, do you have questions? I do. Vice Mayor, go ahead. Um, well, gosh, sorry. Well, that um, the restriction of the partner has to be a nonprofit still hold. Cliff. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor. My understanding is that the patent and the federal regulations require that it be a not-for-profit activity, but it may not, I don't think that that means that it, it has to be either a for-profit or a not-for-profit as far as what type of entity responds. So I don't think we're restricted in the type of entity that would uh, help manage the property but I think we are restricted potentially in how the BLM interprets the use of the property. So at the end of the day, the use of the property has to be for recreational purposes, and then a portion of the concession fees have to be uh, collected for maintenance and improvement of the property. But as far as the entity that responds, it could be an individual, could be a for-profit company and it could be for a non-profit but we do have restrictions on the use that will have to be approved ultimately by BLM. Okay. I must have misunderstood that then because for some reason I had in my head that the entity had to be a not-for-profit entity. So. We were told that. Okay. Yeah. I was like man I'm losing my mind up here. Guess not. We were told that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And there is a section in the agreement that does state that a percentage of the 
profits that are kept must go back into the grounds to maintain the grounds. And um, there's also a section, we learned a lot from the past and what we're trying to do is we're trying to write in those so that this is a 10 year agreement and in 10 years the people that are here can go back in and assess and we're trying to make sure that we keep the p components to make sure that everybody realizes this is not just a uh, contract, this is a partnership. And so there's things like, um, Staff will be going out and making sure that we have lists of what property is the town of Florence and what property is is the concessionaires. We'll also be doing on-site to make sure that it's being maintained annually in the way that it's supposed to be maintained per the contract. So realistically, it's just a lot of contract management that the staff is saying we're going to take on that should take place on our parts. I have a few questions, but first I want to make sure, does any other members of council have questions at this time? Okay. Do you know the percentage that will come back in the contract that we're asking for? Or that's already included in the verbiage? Oh, it's already included in the verbiage. And I, I just didn't jot it down, so I have to find I'm trying section. to gain perspective. Like, for example, where we just put forth $190,000 for the bleachers. I know there'll be some other significant improvements that would need to go forward. Okay, so it's 10%. Okay. It's 10% of their gate fees profit would go towards the building and operations. Would the documentation of like the revenues brought in and the expenditures be taken out, would it be transparent and open books or would we just be taking somebody's word? No, it would always be transparent. Okay. Um, the other question I had was, I know with our rodeo grounds, typically we have an obligation to ensure that there's certain personnel available. What types of gifts in kind would the town be responsible for this particular um, agreement doesn't take that into consideration um, we would assume which council has not directed us yet that but when we get into that we would assume council would still take junior parada as your own and if so then we were assuming that you would provide in-kind services on your event which is the town of florence junior parada um, we did not assume any in-kind services on any other event as they are not the town of Florence's events. Okay. And just in-kind services specifically like the water truck, the personnel that's there to assist in an emergency? If somebody is operating as the concessionaire, they should have availability to that type of equipment and that would be part of their business operation plan to be able to provide those services. Perfect. And then my final comment slash suggestion for our council. Um, frequently we always hear comments that, you know, we didn't know that something was coming available or that an RFP was going out, even as much as we advertise it in advance. What I would like to see just because of the nature of this contract to allow opportunity for whomever chooses to come to the table is to push out the dates one month. So for example, questions would be due by April 26. Responses would be posted to the town website by May 10th. And then first review or applications would be due by June 3rd. We have no issue with that. We'd be happy to make those changes. Okay, Council Member Rodriguez, go ahead. I apologize if I missed it. I was just sort of had an aha moment. Um, if we, this is tied to the Charles Whitlow um, rodeo grounds. So if we were to hypothetically move our rodeo grounds to a different location, would this contract then in turn tie us to an outside entity to where we have to pay for their services to maintain a rodeo ground that we're no longer utilizing? So one, this is tied to the current rodeo grounds or future rodeo grounds at a different site. So they would remain our concessionaire. Um, so they would work with us if council did um, want to move that site. They would work with us through the move. Um, they would be our expert to be able to come in and work with us and provide expert um, guidance in the rodeo arena and other areas that the town does not have in, in those ways. If there was a 
restructuring of the site or reformatting of the arenas out there, they would also provide those. So within this document, it does say that they would be the concessionaire for either this site or a future site as depicted by the town council for the, for the 10 years that the contract is in place. Okay, then maybe we should change that first cover sheet that just, it specifically outlines just the Charles Whitlow Rodeo Ground Facility. We assume that it will carry the same name no matter where the location. Oh, okay, I guess we hadn't discussed any of that, so that's why I just didn't know if that was something that was already decided, so. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, well, then that would cover everything. Yes, staff, staff would like council to uh, make the location, and if you require additional information to be able to make that determination, we would like to be able to bring that with you to you because we have a lot of decisions that are pending based on the knowledge of where our site will be such as if we have to do due diligence for a water well, we don't want to pay the money to do the actual due diligence unless we know it's going to be our site and other, other things that need to move forward. So just keep that in mind. We'll come back periodically and request that. When are you wanting that by, like for us to make that decision? I would like to know what you still need to be able to make that decision. Are Realistic you? numbers. Realistic numbers. Then yeah, we because we all know that the numbers that were given to us, I, I will speak for myself. I felt were inflated, and skewed to push, um, for us to to go one direction. And I would prefer it to be a very realistic number, in a, a real comparison of it being at its current location versus moving it to a second location. Okay. Well, my understanding as part of this contract, we're going to get recommendation from a professional management as to you know, some suggestions as to what they think we should be doing here. We did include that in the contract, sir. That's what I thought you said. Okay. Yes, we did. So we probably ought to wait till we get input from them before we decide whether or not we're going to move it or not. Yeah, that will just, as long as everybody's comfortable with that, we'll be depending on how long the water situation will take to get resolved and we're completely comfortable with that if you're completely comfortable yeah all right with that can we please have a motion to approve the consent agenda tweaking the dates as stated i make a motion to approve item 8d as read with the changes to the dates so okay Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. This is our second call to the public um, for public comment. Is there anybody that would like to speak at this time? I pushed the wrong thing. What did you do? I said D. Okay. Read it into the record as E. Sorry, I apologize. I just realized I said D and not E. We will amend it. Huh? We will amend it for the record. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anybody online? Okay. Closing the second call to the public. Call to current council for current events only. If you guys just don't mind, I, I want to start it off really quick with just one thing, but I'm not going to say everything. We have somebody special in our audience, and um, Ms. Kathy Adams. So you serve on our planning and zoning, and she's also very close with a Mr. Reggie McKay. And he's one of our amazing residents, and he has done so much for the town of Florence. He recently, in the town of Florence, rehabilitated the Quinn Building, and which is now home to a flower shop. He received an award, an amazing and prestigious award, under Buildings and Structures, Historic Preservations, and Adaptive Reuse. And it was for the Charles T. Hayden House, the La Casa Vieja rehabilitation 
and it was submitted by the Motley Design Group. So I just wanted to say thank you because it's such a treasure to have somebody in our community that's so familiar with historic buildings and especially Adobe and it really helps preserve our history and help preserve that for many generations to come. So I do look forward to seeing Reggie and maybe we can get him at a future council meeting so we can all formally say thank you and acknowledge his hard work and efforts and what he what he brings to Florence. So I know this is out You may. I'm going to open up call to the public. I'm going to back it up one more time really quick. And not really quick for you. That was just how I speak. I'm sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I just want to mention that uh, you're right. This is one of the most prestigious awards in the state. Um, and if you look at that book, I wanted to note that Florence had two finalists there. And that is incredible for a town our size. Um, we were lucky enough, Reggie and his team did take home one, but everyone was a finalist, so in my mind, they've already achieved a, a very high goal with the Florence Copper Mine. I also want to note that there were several, many, representatives from our town, starting with our interim town manager, um, our vice mayor, council member Anderson, council member Hughes, and there was at least one county and one other municipality that were finalists and no one appeared. So for us to have that show of support from our town, we notice and it's terrific. So thank you. Thank you. So, call to the council, Council Member Mendoza. Um, it's getting close to the end of the year, so um, FUSD is having all the students re-register for next year, so you have to re-register your students. And if you are registering a kindergartner, um, they're doing one centralized location, so it's going to be over by Walker Butte. They have an office there set up. Uh, as a registration hub for the entire district. Um, aside from that, that's all I got. Thank you. Council Member Hughes? Well, that is exactly what I was going to talk about. <laughs> so, and I, I did want to, it was very exciting to see Florence being able to, to pull down a, a uh, award like that. Um, we went to uh, the third Fridays and we had the ribbon cutting at the Arizona Flower Girl that she, uh, she's in the Quinn building now, gorgeous building. Um, it was a great time and there's a lot of, there's uh, also a new place on, it's called Peyton's Place that's opened up. So that was, uh, there was a lot of activity on the third Friday, so that's all. Councilmember Rodriguez. I just sort of want to echo the same sentiments. It's great to see our community come together between the CERT team and our special talents that each individual person brings to the community. It's fantastic to see us all bringing our strengths to better our town. So I just want to say thank you to our community for being so strong to help and unite um, each other as well as build each other up. So it's great to see that unity. Um, also, I went to Third Fridays. It was fantastic. I got a lot from the side vendors. It's great to see so many businesses open. Um, some of the comments that I heard from business owners is they look forward to seeing our monthly events come back out so um, I told them we're going to do more promoting, Jeff, so that way we can um, people know exactly what's going on on a monthly basis. And I reiterated that we're starting to get our rollback um, when it comes to Parks and Rec. So I look forward to uh, all of our special events in the future as well. Thank you. Council Member Neal. I don't have anything. Council Member Anderson. I also attended the Arizona Forward Gala, and uh, I need just to say it was it, it was so interesting because there was literally hundreds of awards that were being passed out, and this uh, outfit has been in service for 40 years, and their goal is to improve the environment 
and the conditions in the state of Arizona, and we saw some of the, some were funny, some of the awards that they were giving. A beer distributor got an award for taking CO2 out of the atmosphere. So, you know, there's, there was so much that, that, that was recognized, and I sat there and, and was thinking about what all we have done our town that, that, that we don't think about, that we ought to try to get some PR out of it. And I was talking to Jeff about it earlier, you know, like our uh, reclaim at the, at the wastewater. You know, that's a pretty big deal. When you think about it, we're, we're going to save millions of gallons of water. And uh, we need to get recognized for that. And, uh, you know, the more we can get recognized in our town, that's going to bring more people into our town for whatever reason, businesses or whatever. So I think we need to keep Arizona forward in, in uh, mind and start uh, uh, looking at ways that we can take advantage of this. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Um, I too attended the event, as Ms. Adams stated, I was there. And I do want to state that the other um, group that was representing Florence was Florence Copper, and they were nominated for two awards. It is the first time a copper company has been nominated for an excellent environmental excellence award. So that, that's a big shout out to Florence Copper and what they're doing over there on their property to get recognized that way. Um, attended Third Fridays and did all that good stuff. Went to the ribbon cutting. And um, this Saturday from 10 to 1 is the Say Yes to Prom event where we give free prom dresses to any high school student that wants to come and get one. They just have to have their student ID with them. That is the only requirement. We try to provide them with um, a full outfit. So dress, shoes, jewelry. Um, if we can get it, we'll do makeup and things like that. Sorry, that's my cell phone. Um, and we also do have men's attire as well. So if boys need a suit or something, we do have some limited, but we do have that as well. That will be at the Silver King upstairs in the um, real estate office. And uh, that's about it. Thank you. So I wanted to just close on a few more positive notes. So as a council and as a staff and as a community, we all came together over this past year. And we put together $250,000 into our Main Street. And if you look around at our Main Street, you can see some of the positive improvements that have been occurring. For example, the Quinn Building that was brought back to Restored Beauty, it now has a brand new business that just had its grand opening this past Friday, as well as Peyton's Hidden Treasures. Um, they also had their grand opening on Thursday morning, and they were also both opened during the third Friday events. Um, Casa de Baca just received an amazing brand new paint job and a new decking. Uh, and we see some improvements happening at the Gentry's building, and they are slated for opening, I believe, the fall, September, I believe she mentioned. So it's just, it's great to see all of these positive changes that are happening in the life being breathed into our historic community. I want to say thank you to Supervisor McClure for being here this evening. Um, Supervisor McClure and Supervisor Surdy are both representing the town of Florence, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, they're always readily available and they will communicate back to you. So again, you're always welcome at our meetings, as I know we are yours, so thank you for that. We do have an executive session this evening, um, but I would be remiss if I did not let everybody know we do have Road to Country Thunder coming up. And hopefully everybody has an amazing, safe, family fun time on our Main Street. And then as we come toward the actual Country Thunder occurring, hopefully we um, are prepared with that bridge and the transportation and and making sure everybody gets to where they need to be safely. I have full faith in our public safety to help out with our DPS if they, you know, need our support again. So without further ado, we have an executive session, and we need a motion for that. A motion to adjourn to executive session. 
Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign? Motion carries. Thank you.